All right, finally, part two of this custom loop build in the Lian Lee 011 Mini. I know it doesn't seem like it's been that long a time because I'm publishing these more than likely back to back or as close to back to back as possible, but I have waited several, several weeks for uh, specifically these radiators here. So we wanted to go with something a bit larger than 240s and EK supplied us with custom white painted 280 millimeter radiators. On top of that, Arctic sent over several of their white 140 millimeter P14 fans. These are gonna look really nice when paired with these 280 mil rads. And of course, the one thing we really couldn't do without at the time, which is why I split this up into two different parts, uh, we have extra 90 degree fittings. Now these are of course in the satin titanium color, which I love. These fittings from EK are freaking gorgeous, especially when paired with white cases and white components. Uh, with that, I think we have pretty much everything we need now. I, I will not under any circumstance stretch this to more than just a two-parter. So you will see the final like product at the end of this video. So don't worry about that. We'll have to remove a few things. We'll have to swap the radiators and fans out obviously, uh, but then uh, we can get the remaining fittings installed and start bending some tubes. And then we're gonna make the coolant pink. I am super excited about making pink opaque coolant. I, I'm using white uh, kind of like base uh, coolant. It's just a, a looks like milk basically. And and then I'm going to add some red dye slowly to it to turn it a light pink color uh, to match these custom cables. I'm not sure how it's gonna <laughs> how it's gonna turn out. We might have to experiment a bit. I might end up adding a little bit too much red in the beginning. So I'm gonna go very, uh, very easy with it in the beginning and see if we can't come close to this color here. And at that point, I think we will have a very beautiful, cohesive custom loop in this 011 Mini. So with that, let's get to it. Stay with me. To get rid of that annoying activation watermark, hop on over to VIP SCD key and purchase a Windows 10 Pro OEM key for fractions of the price of retail. Just use a secure payment method like PayPal, receive your key in seconds and activate your OS here. Bye bye watermark. And be sure to use our new offer code SKGS for a sweet discount. All right, and we have prepped pretty much everything. We even took care of cable management at the rear. Now we of course need to have that Molex connector for the D5 pump freed up so that we can run an external power supply to that. We don't have to turn the rest of our system on while we are priming the loop. But to prime the loop, we need to have a closed system and we need to close it up with some tubes. So like literally four of the six runs we need to, to make here are only gonna be like an inch long. 
Um, so th this is going to be extremely simple. The only bends that are gonna be involved at all with this custom loop are coming from the CPU uh, running into the distro. And those happen to be literally right next to each other. And the way that EK designed this, it's so efficient. Uh, it is almost exactly level with the uh, ports here with the, the two fittings coming from the CPU block. It always varies just a tad, you know, some motherboards have the socket positioned a bit higher or lower, but this one looks to be pretty much lined up. This, uh, the socket might be slightly lower, but uh, we can always fix that with very tiny bends uh, where we uh, have the turn, the left-hand turns going into the distro. So uh, yeah, with that, let's get to bedding. I've got my heat gun here. I've got my, my cutting tools. I like using PETG. I'm not a fan of acrylic. I don't like how fragile acrylic is. And I, I'm frankly better at bending PETG than I am acrylic as well. So um, good with that. We got the insert and then uh, some pipe cutters just gets the job done nice and quick. But uh, yeah, like I said, most of these are gonna be very short just from the radiators into the distros. So we'll take care of those first and then we'll try to tackle the CPU vents. All right, it is getting late into the night. Uh, you can see I removed the graphics card, just made things easier. Uh, it was actually quite difficult to get the really small tube links to uh, connect between the radiators and the distro block up front. I actually had to slide the radiators back, which I'm, I'm thankful that the O11 Mini here has plenty of uh, a sliding space for these radiators, these 281s. Um, so I, I slid the radiators back and that gave me enough room to insert these small tubes and then I just pushed the radiator back in so that the tubes would slide all the way into both fittings, uh, one on each side. So uh, I think we're good to go. The CP runs were super simple. I only had to do those one time. I mean, they're pretty much carbon copies of each other, just the different lengths there. And you just slowly cut back. This tool here is uh, really helpful. You get yourself one of these and then maybe a set of pipe cutters and uh, a deburring tool and you'll be good to go with PETG that is. So the last thing to do before we start filling this thing up, I'm actually gonna leave the, the graphics card out for now. It's not needed for pump priming or for loop priming, I should say. Uh, we're just going to open this fill port and I have a key somewhere. Here we go. So this here is going to be our fill port at the very top of this distro. And uh, look, we don't need to fill it all the way up. Obviously we wanna make sure that the pump is fully primed. So we want fluid to uh, to be high enough once everything starts circulating all the way through uh, so that it's not pulling an air bubble. So we'll, we'll pretty much top it off. Maybe leave a bit of space just so we can see the fluid churning once we get it in there. Uh, but I have this uh, leak tester here from EK and this is really good. We use this with Tavares' build as well. Just uh, kind of peace of mind before you actually start adding fluid. We're just gonna torque this thing straight onto the block and uh, see if we can hold pressure. Everything else in here should be sealed. So we're gonna pump this up. I'm gonna get the camera here on the gauge. So the goal here is to be able to increase pressure in the loop and then uh, hold that pressure once we close this valve here. As of now, 
it doesn't appear like anything is happening. I don't know if this is all tightened down properly. Oh, we had a loose cap here on the inside of the distro. Well, that would make sense why we couldn't hold pressure. There we go. Now that looks a little more like it. Sorry, the gauge is kind of falling forward a bit. Might get some glare. I'm just gonna fill it up to about 0.75 bar and I'll close the valve here. This thing is not staying upright. And then we'll see if this pressure holds. We'll wait for a few minutes. I imagine if there was any leak or potential leak, it would have shown up right away. All right, so now we're gonna close the valve. And we're gonna see if that pressure holds. And all right, so that needle has not dropped even just a tiny little bit after a few minutes. And uh, that's a good sign. It means we shouldn't in theory have any leaks. If we were to have leaks, we'd see that needle drop. We have a ton of pressure in this closed system now and uh, that needle's not budging, so that's a good sign. So what we can do now, we're gonna go ahead and do the stator procedure anyway, where we just uh, turn on the pump via Molex uh, with an external power supply. We won't power on anything else in the system, just in case, just to be on the safe side. Uh, I wanna practice what I preach here. And with our white opaque coolant inside the fill bag here, we're gonna go ahead and get this in here and then we'll just squeeze. Yep, there it goes. Ooh. This, uh, yeah, this, this is gonna take a while. <laughs> it's gonna take a long while. I'm squeezing pretty hard. This is coming out very slow. <laughs> so um, yeah, we'll be back momentarily. All right, so we've got our extra power supply jumped at the 24 pin. You could use, by the way, the, the power supply, it's already in your rig. You just have to disconnect other things, of course. So we're gonna turn the power on here. Oh, that's a good sign. At least the pump's not dead. Um, okay, I'm kind of confused why that didn't churn any fluid. I cannot believe I didn't notice this earlier. There are actually two closed systems in here and they are not loops at all, um, as far as I know. It's, it just, it's a dead end. So when I turned the pump on, the pump was just pushing fluid or attempting to push fluid into a brick wall, so to speak. So we need to add one more bend but there's a problem. So if you notice how this distro is laid out, we've got the pump feeding into the radiator at the bottom. So this is required. I know you can't see it on camera, but it's there. And it runs into the radiator out the other side into this channel here. Now this is where I screwed up. For some reason, I thought that this was all connected here. So it was gonna go straight from here into the CPU, out of the CPU, into the top radiator, out of the top radiator into what is essentially the reservoir built into the distro. Uh, the problem is this channel all right, it runs to the left, kind of diagonally and up, and it just ends. There's just nothing here. It's just a dead end. And that's why the pump wasn't moving fluid because it, it, it can't force fluid into, yeah, that brick wall I mentioned. So um, what we will probably need to do, yeah, this is kind of weird. So if I had, I don't actually know how this is gonna go. Um, we need to get fluid from this channel into into this channel. So maybe we just have the tube from the exit of this radiator go up and then over. So like just a nice little 90 degree bend there instead of just going straight in. I think that that's doable, I'm pretty sure. Uh, problem is we have fluid in the system now and uh, I'm pretty sure if I pull this, all the fluid's gonna come pouring out of it. So we might need to drain it. All right, there are a number of ways this could go wrong. Let's, uh, let's see, I don't know how fast it's gonna be exiting here. And it's just leaking all the way down the side of this case. But I screwed up, so we kind of just have to deal with it. We'll clean this up later. Just gotta drain what is remaining in the reservoir. And then we can remove that uh, fitting down there at the bottom of the rad. Problem is if I had done it with all this fluid in here, right? It would have tried to have leveled and equalized and uh, it would have shot up and gotten everything else wet. So I'd rather just this section get wet. So now we can safely move this connection. Uh, I gotta, gotta loosen the radiator first. Oh, this is annoying. Take the fitting. Okay, that fitting is stuck on there. I need to remove this entire thing anyway. Wow, I really, I really had this thing torqued down. Oy. Am I tightening that? That's, is that tightening? Yeah, I was tightening. Wow. You know what? I'm just gonna leave this in here. I got no, you know, some other tech YouTubers might have cut that out, but um, I'm just gonna show you how 
Even though I've built dozens of these, I still make really stupid mistakes like this one. All right, I think this is secured. Now it um, looks a bit different. I actually quite like it. It fills up the empty space here. I checked for graphics card clearance beforehand, so there's, there's no issue there, obviously. And um, yeah, I just a bit more diversity to an otherwise monotonous loop where we just have like two big runs. So this adds an extra one and uh, spices things up a bit. So now we can try refilling and uh, getting that D5 pump going. All right, we are ready for round two. Let's give this another shot. Turning on power now. And we just repeat this process over and over, powering on the pump, waiting until the level almost reaches the pump and uh, powering it back off again. So let's see how much more lead weight we have this time. Almost, okay, we're almost there. We're finally getting fluid coming out of that top radiator and into the reservoir. Oh, that's more like it. And we continue filling now while this runs. Try to top it off. And last few things to do here, since the pump and the reservoir are both on the right side of the case, what we can do is rotate it to where the reservoir is higher than everything else. And that should get rid of most air bubbles. Remember, they're lighter than fluid, so they're gonna migrate upward, right? And uh, that should get rid of any air bubbles trapped in the CPU block and the radiators. Doesn't sound like there are many to begin with, though. So I think we're good. I don't, I don't hear anything, uh, any bubbles migrating, actually. So I think our loop is almost primed. Uh, we just need to add the dye now. That's gonna be the fun part. All right, so I've got some red dye here from EK. Uh, now, ideally, I would, you know, kind of prepare this mix externally, but uh, I'm not an idealist. I'm a YOLOist. I'm about to just uh, start adding dye as we go, see how it works. I mean, I, what, I, what I suppose would be the best is um, just adding one drop at a time, kind of seeing how that changes the overall look of things. And uh, if we want more pink, we add more dye. So let's add one drop. Oh, okay, yeah, this is gonna take a while. <laughs> there's, there's a lot of froth at the top here. I should have thought this through a bit more. Oh, oh wow, oh, there we go. Okay, we're getting there. I'm sure it'll darken a lot more once we get more of this dye down in the fluid where it belongs. All right, fluid level's a lot higher. Let's see if we can't add another drop of red dye. Oh, okay, that was a bit more than I wanted originally. It's circulating quite nicely though. We're getting a subtle pink. I think we need a bit more than this though. The pink we have in our cables is, um, it's like a hot pink. This is more like a, I don't know, like a baby pink. Let's do one more drop of pink. Wow, it's like super potent. You had one drop and it just totally changes the color. We need to be very careful not to overshoot it or uh, we'll have to drain some of this fluid. So it's turning a bit more pink. It's still nowhere close to where we need it to be. So let's add another drop. Wow. Closer, we're getting closer. Look at that, you can see it churn. That is so cool. <laughs> I love looking at that. Okay, we are we are much closer now. Um, I would say we're maybe like two or three shades off and actually quite a bit of this dye is not even getting into the loop because we still have a bit of froth to deal with. And the way I've been fixing that is just by shoving more fluid into the loop. And then you get these spillovers. So yeah, it's kind of annoying, but uh, I don't have anything to siphon off the uh, air bubbles. So that's just kind of how I'm doing it. No big deal. All right, we are literally, uh, I mean, we're a shade or two off. A bit more red. Yep, and we gotta be careful here. Obviously, you don't wanna overshoot it. But it is, oh, it's it's so close. I, I I wanna show you what it looks like now compared to the cables because it's it's awfully close. So we've got the fluid in the foreground and we've got the cables in the background. Uh, I, I don't know if I wanna add a bit more because there's already quite a bit of red dye kind of trapped at the, uh, the entrance there, the little fill port that we had. And uh, if I add a bit more fluid, I think that's gonna get circulated through as well. Uh, so I'll do that. And then I think we're gonna be, I mean, pretty close to on the money. I, I'm actually surprised it's worked out as well as it did. Then we'll get this graphics card reinstalled and the PCIe cables. Look at that, just a snug fit next to that uh, extra uh, little bend we had to add. 
I said I actually quite like it like that. There we go. Cable's looking nice and spiffy again. And here it is, Jesse Pinkman. I think um, that's kind of a weird name for a PC, but if you're a Breaking Bad fan and you've been following the channel, like I said, we've been paying homage quite a bit to Walter White with our Walter White builds, but this is finally a Jesse Pinkman build and I just love this pink. I think I, if, if, if I'm gonna toot my own horn, I might as well do it at this point here. Um, I think I did a really good job matching the pink to the cables <laughs> for, for just winging it, you know, just adding red dye to uh, otherwise white opaque fluid. Um, I think I pretty much nailed it. I mean, we're maybe, uh, maybe a shade off and I didn't want to add too much more red because I wasn't sure what that was gonna do to the coolant overall. And again, once you add too much and you kind of have to, you have to go back and dilute it with just white opaque fluid again. You have to drain some of the fluid in the loop. I didn't want to deal with that. This is as close to the pink in the cables as I'm, I'm comfortable trying to get without risking um, overshooting it. And I am just, I, I'm kind of shocked at how good the fluid looks. Now, obviously the only noteworthy runs are running from the CPU into the distro. And there's a bit of empty space underneath here. If I, if I really wanted to, I could have maybe done some I don't know, zigzag bends or something, I don't know, to fill up the extra space. But um, otherwise, I, I'm actually quite pleased with how well we filled this case out. We went with just an air-cooled card. Obviously, if we wanted to custom cool that, that would take up the extra uh, channel here in the distro, so that would be filled with fluid. It's not right now because it's not being used, but we do have that option in the future, which is nice. As for interior lighting, I've only got the graphics card lit, which at this point, I mean, it's not really doing anything because the fans are off. Uh, it's just sitting idle. We've also got the white in these T-Force modules here. These look really good. I love these extreme RGB modules. We've also got a white LED strip, which is sitting, actually it's pretty short. I cut it down to about the length of this uh, little cutout here. And uh, that way it's not gonna be blinding whoever's gonna be sitting in front of the case. You know, you don't want those lights just shining directly in your eyes, especially while you're gaming. Uh, so it's kind of hidden here and it just provides, I don't know, uh, enough glow to draw attention to the colors in the build, but it, it's not over the top, right? It's not lined with tons of RGB strips. I've done that in the past and I'm just not a fan of it. For this particular build, um, I think that just a uh, subtle lighting is enough. Everything else pretty much speaks for itself. And the last two things I cannot go without mentioning. First off, the EK gear. EK makes some of the best water cooling blocks in the business, period. Hands down, it's not even up for discussion, folks. Their distro looks gorgeous. And actually, up until this point, I wouldn't have regarded EK fittings as being up there near the top, but these satin titanium fittings are so sexy. So if you have an 011 Mini, it could be white or black, and you want to custom cool with it, strongly consider first off the EK distro for this case. It is specifically designed for this case, the fittings all line up with radiators, uh, as well as your CPU block and your graphics card block, more or less, give or take. Now, if you're using gear that's not EK gear for your CPU and your graphics card, well, that might not line up perfectly, so that's another plus going with all EK gear in this case. But uh, gosh, it just looks so good when blended together like this. And the second big thanks has to go to Gigabyte. Obviously they sent us so much gear for this build, not only the Intel CPU, but also their Z590i Vision ITX motherboard. It is such a good looking board. These white accents are gorgeous as well as their RTX 3060. This model might not be white like the rest of the components more or less, but I think that the contrast works here. We have black in the custom cables, black in the USB 3.0 and Type-C cables, and a bit of black in the distro as well. Whew, I am running out of breath. If you want to build something very similar to this, maybe you want to change the color combinations or whatever, but you want to stick with the primary components, including the custom cooling gear, you can find all that linked below in the video description tied to our affiliate links. I appreciate those kickbacks, folks. It's like two or 3%, but still it does add up and it does help big time. So graphics card aside, I think this build is very doable in 2021. And heck, even if you wanted to buy a 3060 and it is a bit more expensive, at least you're not paying $2,000 for a card that would have been uh, quite a bit more expensive, maybe a 3080 Ti or so. Uh, would have been upwards of $2,000. I'm not gonna throw something like that in this build. It just, it, it even though I think it would be quite balanced, um, I, I just, that's not something I wanna do on camera in front of you guys. And most of you are struggling to find anything for a decent price right now. And a 3060 at least, I mean, the, the cost is low enough to where even though it is expensive, um, it's not like just, I don't know, it's not like a middle finger to my audience. That's not it's not what I wanna do. I don't wanna rub that in your face, especially when uh, I am sent these products for free, uh, to be completely fair with you. It does require work. I don't just get these cards for free in that sense. I have to put in a lot of time and labor to build these systems and trust me, it gets old after a while. I'm sure many of you are thinking, wow, I would, I would love to have a job of just building PCs for a living. Let me tell you, it's like anything else. After a while, it gets pretty darn old. Everything's exciting in the beginning, right? More or less. So um, the, the graphics card, I intentionally chose a weaker card, something that's not going to be as expensive even in this market, so that uh, would so it would appear a little more attainable and um, not so ostentatious. It's difficult to not come across that way 
when you're a reviewer and you throw a graphics card into a build in 2021. So hopefully that changes soon, although I have my doubts uh, the cryptocurrency market is kind of topsy-turvy right now, but uh, in the US at least, as of time of filming, graphics cards are still extremely expensive. So if you can't hold off, please do that. So that's the one big disclaimer at the end of this video. If you want to, again, buy anything that you see in this build, you can check them out in the video description below. If you like this video, you can click the thumbs up button. That would be appreciated. Consider subscribing and leaving a comment down below. I will catch you in the next one. My name is Greg. Thanks for building a Jesse Pinkman PC with me in the O11 Mini, which is a freaking awesome case.